I have 12 hours to pack from now. I have not packed a single thing. I'm going to be going to college. So this is the container I bought to take everything. Here is my underwear, um, sweatpants. It is currently 1 a.m. in the morning. I have to wake up again at like 7 to 6 a.m. in the morning in order to finish packing. I got my bedding, the mattress topper, the towels, all my jackets are packed in this one. So the hour has finally come. It is 8.30 in the morning on the August 24th. Finally moved all of my stuff out of my room. Everything is all downstairs. I got to put it in the car and we have an hour drive to get there. Then we have to unload the stuff and we have to participate in anything what the school is giving out. I am very, very nervous on my first day. I, I haven't been to school in like two years, so it feels like I'm going back in and starting fresh, you know? This is what the dorm looks like. We moved in, we got to the place. So right here, this is the dorm. This is what it looks like. So this is gonna be my bed right here. I'm sleeping in double, so my roommate's over there here. I have my desk right here, my bed, my belongings go under. The actual storage is right here. This is my drawer. So if I wanna put clothes in, probably never gonna use this. I'm gonna set up the room now. All my stuffs are underneath my bed. All my clothes, shoes, everything I need is underneath my bed. It is 9.30 in the morning right now. Everybody in my household is still asleep. They sent us a message around 8 o'clock this morning that we are going to be meeting over there at a, at a certain spot on campus. So I'm going to grab some breakfast and I'm going to head out over there. That way I can be there on time because I live on the opposite side where we're going to be meeting up at, which kind of sucks, truthfully. But we live in the nicer campus, so it's like you lose some, you win some. <coughs> Gotta go walk up to ring the bell. It's all the way up there. So you, when you come into school, you ring, and then when you graduate, you come back and you ring again. It's a little old tradition they have.
I woke up today, I got to class about 15 minutes early. When the professor started going on about the lecture, one thing I did know that I felt like I had an advantage on, everybody was taking notes like by hand on paper. If you want to do that, that's absolutely great. However, there are many times when I'm writing like something about um, what the, I'm trying to find out what the teacher is saying or and because I'm writing notes and I'm focusing on two different things, I didn't really understand like the entire concept of what she was teaching until I found this. But this is kind of just giving me giving you advice if you go to school and you're seeing this and you want to have like a small little advantage. So I found this website. It's called it's called audiopen.ai. It isn't like it's going to do your work for you. It's not exactly that type of AI. However, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of what it does. All right, so you say yes, and then it starts recording. It's only gonna give you about three minutes of a timer. This is the example. Today, I thought about going out to get ice cream, but then I realized that my professor needed me in class instead of going to go get ice cream. Now, what it's going to do is going to transcribe everything, and then it's going to rewrite it. It's gonna give it a small little title, just so you have something. I wanted to go get ice cream, but my teacher needed me in class, so I ordered ice cream to the school and ate it there. That's a quick demo. That is really nice, because look how many notes I took today. What is marketing, the history of marketing, the, where exactly what she said word for word. Okay, so I will have a busy day today. It's 10.06 right now, I have a class at 10.20 and I have to walk the entire campus to make it onto the other side. Since it's Friday, all of my assignments have been just thrown basically on the same day. I stopped by the school's gift shop. Bought two things, bought myself a little sweater like this, and then I went ahead and bought May one of these sweaters. She likes like the little crop tops because they fit her perfectly because she's really small. This would be enough to just to cover up my nipples and that's about it. So I stayed until my classes ended, but I had nothing left to do. I went to the library and I finished a couple of the projects that I needed to do. And I still have a couple more that I have. I have like four or five that I have to finish. But I went home because I decided instead of staying at the school for the weekend, I'm just going to go home. I mean, it's only like an hour drive for me, so it's convenient. Oh. Anytime I ever see a car, I always pull over to see. I don't care what it is. I'll be going 90 miles an hour, but if I see a car for sale, I gotta pull over and check it out. It says, uh, this one says, Timing Belt Road probably needs motor. Does that say 12? 1200 needs a motor? That's what it looks like. Mm, I don't know about this one. MDX. Interior is not too bad on it. There are many deals out there, and I don't think that's a good one. $1,200, timing belt broke, but probably needs a motor. That's a lot of work. It, it would be a good buy if it, to keep, but to try to flip, it wouldn't be a good thing. In college, it is super easy for somebody to become depressed and not take care of themselves. When you go, when you get out of class, all you want to do is either sleep and then eat and then study and get your assignments done. And a lot of the times that prevents you from taking care of yourself. I recommend taking 30 minutes a day. Just go out for at least a walk or a run or whatever you want to do, but at least you can see the sunlight and you can breathe some fresh air. Because if not, depression for people here comes like this. And you got to be able to control your mind. It is the first time it is perfect weather. It is 73 degrees outside right now. Every other day has been like 90, 90, 95, and the humidity is just super high. So I have to take advantage of this day. I'm gonna try to go for a one mile run or a two mile run. 
I don't think I'll be even able to do one. I'm super out of shape right now. It's been maybe three, four months since I've done one mile. So the goal will be two. If not, one will be the backup plan at minimum at least. I just had the worst time imaginable. I had 10 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock and I got so tired on the second mile I'm starting to walk. I just finished doing one of the one of the laps. I still got three more. I'm at 16.33 on a one mile and then one lap. That's a horrible time. I feel like this is the one part where it's the most neglected in like college, sitting down and actually doing your work. I'm doing a quiz right now. I have seven questions down. I have 25 in total to go. So I'm almost halfway there. Principles of marketing. I even got a little candle going to get, get help me get focused. This is the one thing that I cannot mess up. You have to zero in on your studies if you're going to be at college, even though it's fun either to the parties that are going right now or to go out and drink with other people. However, there is some stuff you cannot ignore. And the studies are one of them. Yesterday I was in class and I got out and when I got out I went to this bulletin board that they post like they'll, they'll put up ads for, for paid tutors or any events that are going on. Well, they put this ad up. It's called Pitch Palooza. But it, it's for today, September 27th from 3 to 6 in Raj Hall. Um, it says word for word. It says, make your first impression, stand out to employers, gain confidence, and win money. Live workshop panels at 3.30 and 4.30. I get out of class around like 3, so I can attend 3.30. Alumni coaches, VR mock interviews, headshots, and pitch your product, and intro to competition, and more. I know I haven't really described what I'm talking about just yet, but hear me out, hear me out. So in this book, I have two product designs that I want to go ahead and try to do. One of them is more of an app. So the other day I was studying here in my room and I realized like, man, I need to finish this assignment, but I'm really hungry. But I wanted to go get something over there in the cafeteria that they serve food or what they call the pubs, like a little restaurant on campus. But if I could have had it delivered to me, that would have been even better. And I was willing to pay. So I'm thinking of trying to find somebody that knows how to program and then being able to develop that app so I can provide people maybe jobs because majority of the people on campus are either earning minimum wage or they're working at servers to gain money for tuition. But if you if I can create jobs for those people, I think that's where I can find success because some people will be like, well, all I have to do is just go pick up a food on campus and drop it off on campus. How hard could it be? So that's my idea number one. So they're barely setting up the event right now. And I realized that they are going to be having headshots. And I don't want to have my shirt just a plain white tee so in a hat so i'm coming back to switch out my shirt to i only have like one shirt that i think i can switch into this is my only shirt that i think i have that's like a polo it's a little bit of a dress wear so i'm going to use this and some there we go. Inside there 
was like the stuff you make in a player pose. There was a broken cardboard <coughs> inseam in the rim. It's 416 right now. I'm on my way. I have to cross the entire campus to get there on time. Um, yes, 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 yes. Hello. How you doing? Good, and you? Good, what's your name? My name is Byron Flores. I have another idea that I, I wanted to do. It's kind of started here at McDaniel. The other day, I was in my room and I really wanted to get something to eat, but I had an assignment due in an hour. And it was gonna take me about maybe like 50 to 45 minutes. And I knew that if I went to go get food, I would cut short. So I kind of want to try to create a like an app. It's called Milo. It would be the students living on campus and it only work for campus. The concept is the Grubhub and DoorDash and Uber Eats. Students Students would be able to tip students to deliver their foods from like the pub or the cafeteria or from the vending machines if they wanted to to their door and that way students could it creates jobs for students here on campus and be able to give them money as well as if McDaniel wanted to get behind it this would allow students to possibly use more McDaniel bucks this could grow into something bigger I think that like when we come in as students and and they first introduced this to the freshmen. I believe that it could definitely grow into something that's that lives on and has a longer longevity than in other apps. So the problem you're solving is, as a student, you don't have time to go get the food yourself because you've got like a test you're studying for or an essay you have to write. And so you're gonna tip or pay some other student who has free time to work to run out and get it for you or to somehow Correct. be like last miles delivery person who's going to go pick it up at the front desk somewhere and bring it to you. The, the first option, mainly because I believe when you order from Grubhub and DoorDash and Uber Eats, it's way too expensive and it's way too unfair for the price. And yeah. I think that if, if a student lives on campus, he or she or they would know where it is and better than somebody that doesn't really know and doesn't have access to the facility on campus. Yeah, I mean, that's something you could even, you could easily start. You could even probably leverage the Venmo or Cash app as like a channel for making the payments go through or something. And you just have some sort of like group chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can use to facilitate these things on your own. There's an interesting company I stumbled upon just a couple weeks ago that you might want to look at and see some of the market research that they've done. It's called minopod.com. Minopod.com. M-I-N-N-O-W-P-O-D.com. It's like a, a, a food locker for colleges, but also for, you know, uh, other marketplaces. That's where I think this might be interesting because it's for property managers, it's for large communities, senior living communities, um, you know, large com apartment complexes. And um, the problem that they're trying to solve is simply that when it comes to food delivery, getting the food to the facility, the, the community itself, is only like half the battle. And then it's like getting it from the gate or the front desk or the lobby to the right person in a large community is really challenging. And I imagine a college campus is pretty similar. Well, So they're coming out from the opposite perspective. They're coming out from the perspective of the food delivery companies trying to get their foods delivered. You're coming out from the perspective, you're the student, you're the end user who's trying to like make sure it gets to you and it gets to you while you're, you know, doing other things because you're a busy guy, right? Mm -hmm. So, but they have certainly thought through a lot about the marketplace. And so they have a whole different, they have sections uh, talking about like who are the different marketplaces and who are the different property management groups that they are partnering with. That might give you a sense of how big your idea can really be when you think about outside the four walls or whatever of a, of a university or a college because it could be a larger opportunity than what you're considering and that might be uh, worthwhile kind of investigating and this one company seems like they've done a lot of that research because they've already gone out and raised capital but they're a hardware device you're going to solve the problem from a more of like a perspective of like a task rabbit kind of a solution or it's like you know somebody here that I know and trust I'm going to send them to go get it Mm -hmm. Post somewhere that all my students, you know, friends, you know, can see. Yeah, you know, I'm willing to pay five bucks for someone to go pick up my 
Grubhub or whatever, Grubhub Boat, you know, whatever. To yeah. Go get it for me. So yeah, no, I think it's a, that business model seems a lot more scalable and easier for you to actually test on your own on college campus and see how it goes. That might be the best want to start off with is what you're saying? Yeah, and it's disruptive, right? It's a disruptive idea in the sense that it's going to change potentially food delivery to these sort of concentrated populations of whether it's students or whether it's senior citizens or whatever, you know? Because it, it certainly is a problem that can go beyond, I mean, I guess in a senior, I guess in a senior living facility, you're not going to pay someone else who's, a, you know, an octogenarian five bucks to go get your food. So, uh, I sort of think that this is something that, um, you know, could start off small and grow. Do you know anybody that knows how to program or, or code properly in order to, to maybe get that started? Magic, my nonprofit here at Westminster, we host a hackathon every year. And actually, it's called the Step Challenge. It's the kind of thing where you can bring an idea, and then we usually will then pair you with, like, if you're sort of an idea business pitch person, but you need a, a, a developer who's got more technical chops, who's like a coder, we can pair you up with that other person. Uh, and then also someone who might be more of a marketing person. We kind of form these teams over the course of one or two days, and we've, we've had some success where uh, students will come to us with an idea, and then we'll basically we help them find like a co-founder for them, you know, that can help them build it. So I would encourage you to apply for that. I know the innovation challenge at McDaniel um, is in the early winter, maybe February. There's like $10,000 that you can win, in which case there would be other developers I could then refer you to where you could actually spend that money on like an outside developer who's not going to take equity in your business as a co-founder or partner. They're just being paid to do the job. I do know a handful of developers that for 10K they might actually be able to build, build you a prototype for what you want to do. McDaniel's Innovation Challenge are not until like February. Okay. So yes, I kind of think it through. But yeah, no, I could certainly introduce you to other developers too if you want to connect. Yeah, please. Um, may, is it possible I can get your contact information? Yes, yeah, so I'll tell you my email address if you have a pen and paper. Yeah. Or, or when a right into your phone. It's uh, my first initial and last name, which is G. All right. Well, Byron, it was very nice meeting you. Oh, thank you so much for meeting with me. That's a great idea. Thank you. I think you're, you're a genuine entrepreneur. Thank you. Thank you. Being what you can do. Thank you. I appreciate it.